very much. I appreciate that. So, uh, good afternoon. Everybody get a good lunch? Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to hope that you don't fall asleep, because usually the presentations after lunch are the ones where everyone nods off and falls asleep. So, to keep you engaged a little bit in today's discussion, there will be a series of quizzes throughout the presentation. If you get the answer wrong, uh, let's not talk about it. It's just not, it's not pretty. We'll just put it that way. But so, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Jason Voschel. Uh, I work for a company called Zebra Technologies. Anybody ever heard of us? Few people, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, everybody ever heard of a barcode? Who knows what a barcode is? Who knows what a QR code is? Who's wearing a badge right now? Who doesn't want to raise their hand? <laughs> Looking at you right there. Uh, so, Zebra, we, uh, started our company out a long time ago. We, in, in kind of invented the barcode, if you think of it that way. And anything that gets tracked from point A to point B, your FedEx package, you guys know FedEx, DHL, uh, your FedEx, but when you go to the store and you buy some Doritos and you go up and bloop, so that, that scanner and the, the printer, that's, that's what Zebra does. Uh, do you know American football? Who knows American football? Yeah, not many people, but if you ever watch American football, sometimes on the highlights, when the guy catches the ball, they will put a circle around the player, and they will show you how fast they run. That, that's our technology. That's tracking a player from point A to point B. So all of that stuff is what Zebra does. So we're, we're involved in quite a few things. Anybody ever been to the hospital? <laughs> when you went to the hospital, you probably got a wristband put on your wrist. Zebra prints that wristband. If the doctor came in and scanned it, they scanned it with our scanner. And you can imagine if you're in the hospital, you don't want uh, his wristband but her medication. That might not work out so well for everybody. So that's kind of what we do in general. My job is everything we make, I'm responsible for the security of that thing. So unlike a standard cybersecurity, where you know you have to deal with your passwords and your servers and your agents, we deal with developing a product and keeping it secure all the way through from design in use, and even so that our customers trust us. So when they buy something from us, they know it's safe and secure, which leads us to, should have got a drum roll on there, would have been fantastic. Um, yeah, drum roll please. Uh, leads us to uh, the application security, and what are the problems with that? So I'll, I'll, I'll re read a little bit off of here, but mostly I'll just try to talk to our slides a little bit, but the big one for us is customer trust. If you buy, who, people have Apple phones and Android phones, uh, would you buy a phone from a company you didn't know? Would you buy a server and encrypt it with encryption you didn't know? You probably wouldn't. So one of the things we like to do with Zebra, this is really loud, one of the things we like to do with Zebra is make sure that our customers can trust the products we put in place. So when I put that printer in the hospital, when I'm tracking that player on the NFL field, when you scan your big TV that you bought at the store, it's going to be right. You can't use it as a jump point. You can't hack into it. You can't show up late for my presentation. What's up, man? <laughs> uh, so it's quite good. And part of the problem is we started to look at this. Okay, how do I tell somebody we're doing a good job? How do I say, yeah, our, our product's good? And I go, really? How do, you, how do you know? Jason, how do you know you're doing a good job? Because if I can't measure it, I can't improve it. That's a true fact. If you can improve something without measuring it, please see me afterwards. I'd love to talk to you. So I don't think it can happen. So one of the problems we had at the beginning was, uh, what are we going to use as a model? Now, I know it says role models up there. That doesn't mean, what's the, where is he? Where is he? Where's the soccer player's name? Where's my boy? Yeah, he, that guy's a role model, right? Everyone was a, that's not the same type of role model here, but it's some, but we didn't have a good way, a good tool, a good method, anything. When we first started looking at this many years ago. Um, and then I was also nervous. Okay, we got, we got this secure development life cycle. We're going to build all these cool products. If we buy another tool and we put it in place, is it actually going to work or the team's just going to get frustrated and be like, here's another tool we have to deal with and it's not going to be very good. These are the, these are some of the problems we had when we started looking at what we've got. That and people just cannot wear a watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, guys. We're just having fun. It's perfectly okay. So what do we need? I'm developing products. I got to take a look at this stuff. I need it to be a risk-based approach, and it got to be measurable. So I can tell teams, hey, we're good. What, what does that mean, Jay? What does it mean to be good? Um, what's a good program that we can use for this? And our solution, what we came up with, 
was Owas Sam. And I'm going to need people to put their hands up, so pay attention if you're not. But how many people have heard of Owas Sam? Every hand should go up. Fantastic. Good job, team. Yeah, so we said, look, that makes sense to us. And I know right now you're probably thinking in your head, Jason, that's great, but how, how in the world um, did you get there? We're going to get there in a second, but we have our first quiz of the day. So when I go through these, when I get to the answer you think is correct, you put your hand in the air. Just be lucky I'm not asking you to go, whoop, because I did that last time. Sometimes it doesn't work out so great. So what was the primary driver? Like, why did we look, what was our primary driver for looking for a risk-based approach to this? Was it A, customer trust? Was it B, lack of a soccer player to look after? Was it C, we had too many tools and challenges? Or, where's my drum roll person? Was it D? Yeah, put the hands in there. That right. So th these are the things we looked at. So keep paying attention because there will be more quizzes throughout the presentation. But you may be asking, Jason, we've looked at this. We've looked at Sam. We've, uh, why did you pick this? Well, these up here on the board. I'm sure most people have heard of BSOM, ISO, SOC. Brick. You guys heard of Brick? Anybody heard of Brick? No, I just made it up. I'm just trying to make sure you're still paying attention. Very good team. All righty then. But yeah, look, BSIM's great. I mean, people like to use that, but it didn't fit for us. We needed something that was measurable, that I could look at, that was very easy for our teams. So when I talk about teams, right now we started with part of our organization, and I'll get to show you what we did overall, but we're looking at almost 30 different teams that we're measuring with this tool. So if it wasn't easy, and clear, and concise, and I could measure it, it was going to fall apart really fast. And that's not what we wanted to have happen. And some of these other ones are pretty good, too. So we do have products that are ISO certified, and we've got, uh, I really should have got a clicker so I don't have to walk across the room. But we do have some items there. So what does our journey look like? So we started this about, about three or four years ago. So if any of you are in the room, anybody currently using SAM? Like you're using it right now today. Yeah. How many of you are still using spreadsheets to measure? A couple. Yeah, I'm not sure what everybody else, I'm curious to see what everybody else is using, but we started this process out, and we started with the spreadsheets, and they kind of sort of worked, but have you tried to manage 30 different spreadsheets across all different product lines with 50 people trying to do each one? It gets to be quite a nightmare after a while, and I needed to keep this clear and concise. We have a board of directors I have to talk to. I've got customers I've got to explain it to, so this is what we did. We started in 2022. We took a good look at what we've got. We started to bring in the SAM framework. Over the next three years or so, so three years, we started putting it in place, making improvements, and driving to there. And thankfully, I'm here today to talk to you about what our company did and how successful we've been at it. And what does success really mean? Well, we're going to get to how I can measure that in a minute, right? Because I've said before, if you can't measure it, you can't approve it. That's right. Tell you tons of quizzes throughout this whole day here. So part of what we've had, so in SAM, you guys have scopes, right? And a scope is usually like a team or a business unit or whatever you might be calling it. Well, at Zebra, we have different product lines. So I talked to you about the scanners we've got. That's one of our product lines. I told you about the printers we have that print your badges. That's a product line. We've got 14 or 15 of those different product lines. And every team, when we started out, all seem to have different processes and doing things different ways and different people in charge, and it, it, it just seemed like a little more chaos. So when we started putting this together, we started pulling the guardrails in and having teams work on, this is what you need to focus on. A lot of our teams are focusing on, I want to build a product. When I push this button, I want this light to turn green. Awesome. They don't, the security part, they're like, eh. But now I can tell them, this is the, this is the path you're going to follow. Here's a tool you're going to implement. Here's how you're going to be 10 minutes late to a presentation and sit in the back of the room. And then not even pay attention while you're here. <laughs> Those guys. Uh, we also thought about, you know, do we want to roll this out, you know, one by one? We've got 14. We didn't. We threw it at everybody at once and said, we're going to jump in on this in the deep end of the pool and, and go for it from there. And it's been working rather well. And then part of keeping it involved, a lot of people, if you've, if you've started to use SAM, sometimes your team's oh, I forgot I had to do that. I'll, I'll get around to it when I can, or I'll make that in process improvement. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on it. We started reporting on it every single week. So we've got a project manager who looks at all of our teams, looks at their scores, and says, here's where you need to be. How are we going to get there? And then we kind of keep track of their progress. In addition to that, a lot of our teams have like a, we'll call a, like a, they all use the same process. It's very central. 
And so we'll do that and only ask a team one time, and then we'll let teams kind of bounce off what that's going on. So it worked out pretty well. We have our first sleep person in the room. All righty. <laughs> I should have brought along a little water gun. That would have worked out pretty good. Um, some of the challenges we faced, skepticism. Right? When we first put plan- Sam, when, you, when I asked you who had Sam already, some of you put your hands up. I'm sure that wasn't, was it super easy to roll out right away? No one questioned it? People were like, yeah, this is great. We're going to do this right away. It's like eating chocolate. No. People were like, what, what are we doing? Is this, are we sure this is okay? How's this going to work? And really helping them understand you know, what, what, this is what we're doing. Sam also provides a very easy way to start implementation. It's a list of 90 questions, and they're multiple choice. When you were in school, in the university perhaps, doing a multiple choice exam is way better than, here's a blank piece of paper, write me an essay. And Sam helped us do that. It helped kind of lean into the ease of it to put it in place with the teams. And we also were able to take the teams and say, some of our operations are shared services. Security operations is a large part of the same model. That security operations team sits in one spot, and every team can bounce off of them. And so the teams realize quickly, okay, Jason, it's not 90 questions. It's really like 70, and that's what I have to focus on. And so we've started to help them work in the areas where they're, they're most comfortable. Having a common language, when I talk to one team, and I talk about, what, does anybody know what, the five, what are the five domains of SAM? Oh, I heard governance? Operations. You already answered. <laughs> Operations? Zip it. Good job, though. Kolusky? Oh, uh, we should talk afterwards. <laughs> uh, what else we got? We got uh, governance, design. Architecture. Architecture. Nobody? I thought we were using Sam in this room. Operations. And deployment. Yeah. So when we talked to the teams, the way they were doing things before we stepped in, they didn't have a common language. I couldn't ask one team, hey, what are, you, are you doing a threat modeling? Are you, are you doing that? Like, what, what does that mean, threat modeling? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. So we started, it gave us a good set of vocabulary to work. The teams did work differently across the board. And so it really helped us to understand what was happening from that. Um, getting buy-in. When I talk to senior leadership, which everybody in this room, when you're talking about Sam, you're probably going to talk to senior leadership at some point to tell them how you're doing. Every single leadership I talked to, it was easy to say, we're using Sam, and your team needs some assistance in the implementation phase, or they need help in the governance phase. That was easier than me trying to tell everybody different words. Uh, and then just increased awareness. With one set of metrics, one, t- one framework that everyone was kind of geared towards, it kind of helped understand what each area looked at and what we were working on. With this, with any scoring, comes a natural tendency for gamification. What that means is, my gentleman friend here in the front row from Kodowski, he wanted to be first in answering the questions, because he, I want to be first. Some other teams also want to be first. Well, we started to put it in place. Sam members got a score. They're like, oh, I'm at 1.1. I want to be at three tomorrow. Does anybody, if you've looked at the SAM model, does anybody have a perfect score three? Yeah, and if I was to ask you what you thought if someone had a perfect score, self-assessed, right? And I say, hey, man, hey, listen, fill this form out. Tell me how you're doing. And Alessandro, they say that right? Alessandro goes, okay, I'll fill it out. It's like grading your own paper. There you go, Jason. I go, wow, you got 100%. Do you believe that? Does anybody believe a perfect score of a three? Yeah, you guys are really quiet. We might have to do a stretching exercise. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, you don't believe, it's not, it's not that way. And so with gamification came team, I don't want to say cheating. Cheating is not the right word, but there tends to be exaggerations on how well you think you're doing. Um, so we had to, we had to kind of combat that. It did work out well. We put, we put a big dashboard up, big scoreboard. We let every team know how they were doing. And that helped drive some behavior. And unfortunately, teams get a little competitive. It drives a nature of, yeah, you might have a 2.8, but I don't have a high confidence in, in what you're doing. And, um, yeah, this is kind of what it started to look like. Look, everybody's awesome. Everyone's doing great. It, that, that wasn't how we wanted to get to. Everyone can't win the World Cup. Only one team can do it. Um, so how do we get past that? Hmm. Hmm. How do we get past part of that? So part of it was we brought in some outside consultants, and we said, can you please look 
through all these team members, all these scores, and start interviewing them and find out, what's my confidence look like? I could bring an internal audit, but internal audit, people don't like them very much. Does anybody here love internal audit? Yeah, no. <laughs> or even any kind of audit. That's not where you want to go. So that was one piece we did. The second thing we did, which was really huge for us, I get asked the question, Jason, what's good? Or what's good enough? What are we, what are we striving for? And we said it earlier in this room here. You can't have a perfect 3.0 score. And if you do have that somehow, some way, you're probably spending way too much time, money, resources, or on your phone too much, not paying attention, that you just don't know what's going on. Sorry, I think it's funny. So what we're, what we're trying to do with some of that is we said, look, let's get a target. Let's find out from the teams. Here are the questions you can get. Here's where you're supposed to be. And we started talking about a percentage to target. So it was more normalized. So instead of Sergio, instead of Sergio, you're, I don't need you to get to 2.2. No, no, no. I need you to get to 100% of what we think is best for you. And so we would go through the SAM framework. We'd go, here's where he probably needs to be based on his business or what he's working on. This is his, his, his top max score. Top max score is not three. And teams want to know, what am I trying to get to and what am I trying to hold on to? So we'd mark that through, and then we would come back and say, okay, Sergio, uh, you're supposed to be here 100%, and you're at, you're at uh, you look like you're pretty good. You're, you're at 92% today. How do I get the last 8%? And so he would work towards that. Now, that 100% may only equate out to like a, a 1.9 score, but that's his max score. Another team, their max score might be 1.43. <clears throat> Where is he? There he is. Might be 1.43, which is a magical number we'll talk about later. Uh, another team might be 2.7. It also is risk driven. Some of my teams, some of the products that we build, I have a, I have a lower tolerance for risk. I have a, a much less, I don't want you to mess up your stuff. It goes to the federal government. It's going into healthcare. So we, we don't have as much leeway on what we're messing up or how we're designing. So this helped us move the, move the teams around and decide, you know, one size does not fit all. One ring does not rule them all. Anybody? Anybody? Nobody knows one ring rules them all? There's not one Tolkien fan in here. Thank you. I got somebody to get that. Don't be scared to look up. Uh, what we also noticed was that teams would say, hey, I, um, yeah, Jason, you know, when we took the scores, I said, you gotta get to 2.1. I got to 2.1, Jason. Great. But you're not doing any sort of, uh, governance whatsoever. That's okay. I'm doing great in the other areas. That's not a good answer. So just because you over control in one area and under control in another area doesn't make your entire process good. So this is another good part of us doing a percentage to target. So even if you go over, then that's fine. Good job. But you don't get credit for it. There's no extra credit in Sam if you go over in certain areas. So we don't want to do that. Um, yeah, so our initial approach, we, we, I'm going to kind of skip past the slide we talked about this, but we did kind of work, work through this and refined our approach to a percentage target. And I don't know if anybody, is anybody using something like that today? So quiet. Shh. No way. Oh, got somebody in the back. Yeah, so it, it, it does lend itself to what you need to be working on. Don't focus on the number. Focus on where do I think I need to be and how can I get there for each individual spot. It really does help draft the teams. Oh, it's quiz time again. You guys ready? Oh, wait. Uh, I will get questions at the end. Is that kosher? Okay, thank you very much. I'll remember. What's your name? Daniel? Daniel, I'll remember. Okay, it's quiz time. Is everybody ready? Yeah. It's quiz time. Are we ready? Yeah. That's close enough. I like it, though. So what metric did we use to look at to get rid of the drawbacks of gamification? Was it A, absolute scam score? Was it C, risk scores, D, number of security vulnerabilities, or, thank you, you're the drum leg, you, you, yeah, you volunteer, that's all I'm saying. Or was it B, present the target? What's with this half of the room? You guys are just like, oh, that's so boring, dude. Yeah, it was B, present the target. So that, that helped us kind of get rid of the gamification a bit. Uh, even, and even though teams wanted to be at 100%, they still had, to, they could only get to 100% on their, on their stuff. And that, that's what we, that's the behavior that we wanted to drive. Um, so great. Jason, Sergio's got his, he's at 98% now. He's doing great. Uh, how do I know if it's effective? Any idea how you would say, effect, yeah, I've got this great process. Score looks good. 
Auditors came in, looks like I'm doing pretty solid, but how do I measure effectiveness? Well, we took a look at something called a risk score. Does anybody know what risk is? Don't say the board game. I can't read your name from here. No, not you. Mr. Forest Reserve, yeah. What's your name? Albert. Albert, do you know what risk is? Danger of finance loss. That's a good, I like that answer. That's solid. Anybody else know a formula for risk? Like you are, you, we, you're good, man. I like this. Can you know more questions? You got to let everybody else answer. Yeah. Impact versus risk. That's one way to define. That's two variables. But if you really try to measure risk and how, how, you know, I'm building a product, how risky could it be? There's, there could be thousands of variables, right? My finance variables, my, my business risk, my financial risk, my physical risk on this thing. So we took a look at just from a security perspective and we bought a, a tool. It's a, like an aggregator that takes all the things we have from all the vulnerabilities from all the things. So CodeQL, GitHub, Orca, Tenable, Synopsys, go pick your favorite 20. That's probably what we had in place. And it pulls it in and it spits out this number. We'll talk about, you want to catch me offline later, I'll talk about why that number is important and how we use it. But it spits out a number, and it's based on risk, zero to a thousand. And so what do you think, if I have a really good SAM score, I'm doing all the right things, do you think my risk number would be high, or do you think it would be low? Not everybody at once. It would be low. That's an inverse correlation. So that's a good measure of effectiveness. So we took a look at, hey, we've got all these SAM items. We've got our processes. We've got stuff going on. What would it look like if we match these against our risk scores? And we, we, did, we did that. And it actually turned out to be pretty good. It looked like, let me go all the way to there. It looked like a big X on the screen, right? Inverse correlation, really simple. SAM score goes up. My risk better be going down. Now, I couldn't bring real results because it's proprietary, obviously, but I will tell you that in general, if you took a look at our glide path, this is what it looked like. So now I can go to management. I can go to my leadership. I can go to my teams and I can say, hey, as we put stuff in place with Sam, as we put the right controls in place, the right processes in place, we drive our scores to where we think they need to be. At the same time, we're seeing the risk drop down. It's a direct, indirect correlation, but directly related. This helped our teams buy into it. They understood, wow, so if I do this, my risk score goes down, which means I'm not in trouble anymore, which means I could have trust in my customers. And it really worked out pretty darn good on how we were moving some things around. So kind of in a general statement, I'm going to save some room for questions at the end, that when we use SAM, it's not just about, hey, I got to get to a number. It's am I getting to the right number, am I getting to the right percentage, is Sergio doing a good job with his 92, 96, 98, 100%? Can he hold it there? And is that really providing value? That risk score we talked about is driven primarily off some vulnerabilities. And if anybody's done any kind of vulnerability management, you know the teams don't like it when you say, hey, you've got 6,000 vulnerabilities you got to go fix. What does that mean? What it really means is if I've got my, what's my risk? And if I do a good process, is my risk going to go down? That's what leadership cares about. Am I at risk here, or are you, Jason, are we going to be okay? And there's a tolerable amount of risk. We, we drew the line somewhere on what we thought was appropriate. You can never eliminate the risk, but you can sure as heck reduce it to a manageable amount. And that's what we tried to attempt to do here, which I thought was pretty nice. Oh, I forgot his name. Was it Daniel? Daniel, what's your question? I got more slides, but... Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so what Daniel asked was, Jason, you have different targets for different teams. How did you figure out what target fit, uh, which team? So first we tried just a dartboard. We just threw darts at a dartboard and that didn't work out very well. Instead, what we really looked at was, uh, customer driven items. So if we, um, as an example, one team, they may, one of our teams does a lot of healthcare. And so controls in those areas were geared towards the safety of the, you know, the, the integrity of the data. If you think the CIA triad, that's what's most important. Confidentiality is important, yeah, but the integrity, like you can't, you can't mess up that I know who you are, this is your medication, and it's the right amount. And so those type of controls we kind of mapped into SAM as we went along. Um, some of our products are, some of our products are not 
all web-based applications. So in some areas, security operations wasn't a thing. It, it didn't matter. Well, Jason, doesn't, what do you mean it doesn't apply? Well, it's not a web-based application. You're not doing security operations. How do we do that? So we would lower the thresholds there and say, you know, you, team, you don't need to do this as much. Um, yeah, there's still updates you got to put out. But when I hand you your Apple device, like we have a handheld, I can't force you to put, to take the upgrade. You can just, you can still be on Windows 3.1 if you really wanted to. Hopefully you're not, but you could be. So part of those the controls we lowered down. So we took a look at the businesses, our customers, what we were trying to accomplish, and that's kind of how we set the target scores. It's a good question. I like it. We'll take more questions in just a second. How's everybody doing? There's like four people in the room. Man, I'm just killing it up here. Uh, one of the really surprising um, output when we started looking at Sam is acquisitions. Has anybody in the room been a been part of an acquisition? Either been been bought or been bought or done the buying? Like twelve. Does everybody know what an acquisition is? Nobody knows what an acquisition is. Just nod your head. <laughs> or I should say this, watch this. Just look at your phone if you think you know what an acquisition is. All right, everybody knows what an acquisition is. Fabulous. So what we found was, you know, when you when you do an acquisition, it's like buying a used car. Right? You can't take it out for a year and then decide to buy it. It doesn't work that way. You've got a limited amount of time to take it out for a test drive, kick the tires, and make sure she's okay to go. We started handing the, the acquisitions that we were looking at. We handed them the same questionnaire and said, fill this out. Tell, tell, us, tell us what looks good. And very similar to what I mentioned earlier, if somebody had a, I got a perfect score. I mean, I got a 2.9. What, what do you think we did? Look, I'm looking away. What do you think we did if we saw somebody with a high SAM score? We asked some more questions. We're like, well, what are you doing? Something, something doesn't smell right here. Uh, and contrapositally, if they got a really low score, we would do the same thing. And this helped us. I didn't, right, we didn't lean on it. We didn't say, oh, if you get a perfect score, we're going to buy you. It was, you're about here. This looks right. Or it tells us an area we can dive into, either because you scored it too high or you scored it too low. Yeah, and if you're really good at cheating, maybe you could fool us. But don't know if it was a lot, it was a lot better than trying to do scans on every single object they had. So a really good output or unintended consequence of using the SAM model was to help us with acquisitions. Alrighty. I think I'm almost done. Are we got any questions? You guys aren't asleep? Too hot? Too cold? Let me see. I think that's my last slide. Wait a go. Oh wait, I forgot we have a quiz. And then I got you down there. Alrighty. Quiz time. I hope this is the last quiz, I promise. This is the last one. Uh, what significant correlation did we discover with Sam? Higher sa you know what? Watch this. Who thinks it's A? Who thinks it's D? Who thinks it's C? If you think that the answer is B, I want you to make a noise. There we go. I think that's easy to put your hand up. I'm not sure. We like that. Uh, okay, so that's um, that's the right answer for sure. Oh, I forgot about this part. So a question I do get, I think I added some slides on here. You think I'd have rehearsed this ahead of time. but um, Yeah, how much does it cost? I get that question a lot. Jason, that's great. That's awesome. You did this great job. It looks great. How much did it cost? Because I don't have $1 billion dollars to implement this. I've got a budget. And what are we going to do? So I don't have a number. Like, it's not like, yeah, this is what it costs us to implement, you know, 30 teams across the board. But I can tell you that in the beginning, for the first, say, four to six months, every one of our teams has a what we call a business unit security lead. So each team has a security person, and they're the ones that are in charge. So the first four or six months, they were probably spending somewhere between 10 to 12 hours kind of understanding what Sam is, explaining it to their teams, how to take the training, dot, dot, dot. Today that we're in an operational state, it might be one to three hours, depending on the maturity. And that's them just pressing on the teams, hey, are we going to make this improvement and getting things done? So this was, this was a very effective way to do this. And I imagine we'll keep it that way. In addition, it became, when we first started out, we were only doing uh, all of our business units. And our CIO took a look at this and went, Jason, I, that looks pretty good. I, can we do this with our IT departments too? I went, yeah, we, we can. It's a mistake because then he just gave it to me to do. 
Hooray, more work. So, but with that came, um, I got one of my employees here, Sonny, would you just maybe, so Sonny here is on our team, and Sonny is, so Sonny's starting out. He just came on our team. He's going to help all of our IT teams come up to speed. So everything we've done over the past three years, we're about to rinse and repeat for all of IT. So if you're curious about what's it like to get really started, hey, what kind of challenges are you going through in the beginning, my memory is three years, four years old. He's just getting started, and I'd reach out to Sonny. You want to talk about maturity? What's it like that you're already doing it? Come talk to me about that. We can take care of it. But it's great because we got, I mean, IT is now on board. And the highest form of flattery is imitation. And that's basically what IT did with us. They imit, they're trying to imitate what we're doing. So thank you. Uh, wait, this guy down here had a question. I forgot his name. Somebody had their hand up. It was, uh, yes, here, maybe. The mic which one? Do you want? Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Uh, first of all, sorry for being late. Um, <laughs> thank you. For that. Jared, yeah. thank you so I can much. Tell, I can tell it's important. Um, so uh, <laughs> I, I have some experience with Zebra, both uh, directly as a client and then having a lot of clients that use Zebra and support it. And, and one of my thank observations you. has been that there's a hesitancy on the part of organizations that use embedded devices to, like, refresh that fleet, mm -hmm. right? Like, you, you find, like... They got like Win three one. Yeah, they've got Windows three one <laughs> stuff, stuff out there, right? Yep. Um, which obviously blocks a lot of our security initiatives. Doesn't support TLS one dot one, much less TLS one dot two. Blah 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 mm -hmm. blah. But my question for you is, how have the outputs from this program intersected with product management in encouraging them to do things like uh, turn over those fleets faster? Maybe there's maybe there's a tax. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that's costly. Yep. But maybe you guys gate some things behind security tax. I, I don't know. I'm I'm presuming. Like maybe you charge for MFA. Like maybe you charge for S stuff stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But has there been an intersection between the outputs of this and product management that has led to better outcomes for the customer yep. to be able to uptake uh, better security technology quicker? Yeah. So let me just summarize the question and I'll dive into it. Was basically, hey, our customers are on three point one. They don't want to move. Uh, has Sam d has Sam done anything to help grease the skids? If you think of it that way, the answer is absolutely one hundred percent yes. And here's why: one of the big items, like real quick, why aren't we on three point one still? Primarily because of security. Yeah, there's cool features that come out, nifty things, and yeah, we make a new printer, we make a new embedded device, and it can do new things. But security or operations team, they don't want to move. Um, and so I'm scared if I put a new device in, it's not going to work. I'm not sure about the security of that. So we started taking a look. Teams, I would ask teams, do you know what threat modeling is? Do you know what my number one answer was? Somebody said, no, I don't know what threat modeling is. Anybody else? It's pretty close. What's threat modeling? <laughs> so... As we, I mean, this is many moons ago. Some teams would do that, but we would start to talk about threat modeling. That would lead into why would not a customer, is, is security one of those items that comes across that we need to worry about? That helped us drive some white papers based around security. Like, I'll give you a great example. One of our printers is just so old and we have customers who are just sitting on it because they, I love it. It works perfectly and I, I don't want to bother it because it's, it's been fine for this long. I'm sure it'll keep being fine for this long. We've been able to come in and say, look, you need to upgrade this one. Because as we've done threat modeling, we've realized there are a lot of threats to your printer that you didn't, you weren't aware of. Yeah, you're on TLS 1.1. You don't realize what that means. Let me help you understand what that means and why that's important. And we're able to do that because we did threat modeling, because we put SAM in place, and now it's part of our standard process. In the past, it wasn't as clear. Teams might do it, but they wouldn't do it in a formalized structure. So that, that helped, that helped immensely. That's probably one of the, the biggest pieces. And then two, just from an operation standpoint, to, um, well, from an operations standpoint, other other products, teams don't want to upgrade. They will now because they understand they, it's the customer trust. Remember, the very beginning I talked about customer trust. We've got a solid process. I can measure it. I can kind of convey that to the customer. They take a little bit of a leap. Hey, it works just like you said it should. That that should be solid in place. One of the items with Sam, he mentioned about customer trust. Does everybody know what an RFP is? Somebody tell me what an RFP stands for. Request for proposal. You get those before you're about to go buy or get a bunch of things. About maybe three years ago, we started to see, do you use SAM or BSAM or whatever else? We saw that on a questionnaire. They started cropping up. And now it's on every single, almost every single one they come through. In the past, we'd have to answer something like, 
uh, we align. We'd have to, it was really, you know, the lawyers got involved. But today, I can say yes. And you know what the question is going to be tomorrow? What's your score? That's, that's going to come down. I'm telling you, the customers start, because that's a measurement tool they can look at and go, oh, just like when we acquire a company and we use the SAM tool to help us kind of figure out is this good or not, customers are going to look at, I mean, yeah, the question is a hundred things long, but that on there to be able to say, yes, we're using SAM. And I'll, you know what? I, I want them to ask me what my score is. I want that to happen tomorrow because I'm proud of it. Those teams are going to come up and go, and well, yeah, we're at 2.3. Really? Tell us more about that. And they start asking. So it helps a little bit with the refresh. We're able to kind of maneuver and look at that. It also helps us on RFPs just to get things forward further. So thank you. Yes. Other question to the house? Oh, question. So, you should just throw it. <laughs> Oh, he, so the question was, uh, Jason, you said that 1.7 and 2.3 were big numbers. Will you say that again? Important number. Oh, I said 1.43 is an important number. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so real quick, you don't say anything and you don't say anything. Does anybody want to take a guess on what 1.43 is? Why that number is important to Sam? Can I have the microphone real quick? Thanks. I'm going to need this to hand it. Is it it's on? Okay. Should we get feedback? Okay. Tell them what it is, Doug. It's the average score on the benchmark. Average of what? Of the overall uh, SAM score of everything aggregated. And where'd you get that number from? From the OWASP SAM benchmark. There you go. Yeah. So that's why that number is important. Um, yeah, it makes sense. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, we... Uh, yeah, we saw, we're, so that number is a number, and we still use our percent to target because that's a better indicator of how our teams are doing. But don't think I don't get asked by the board of directors, you know, Jason, overall, just tell me one number. You know, and we cringe at that, right? I just, that's, how do I tell, how do I put all this down in one number? We can say now, and that's the OWASP, they took all these things, blah, 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 1.43 is the average number. But I am, um, I played sports in college. And our coach used to always tell us that winning is not that way. Winning is that direction. So I don't care if it's 1.43. What's good for zebra? What do I want to be? I don't care if my competitor is two feet behind me or six inches or six centimeters. Sorry. Um, I got to go there. That's where I have to get. My customers are driving what we need to do, and I'm driving ahead of my customers. So that, so yes, it's an important number to look at if someone asks you, but the answer is quantified with we're going to do better than that because we're better than that. Good customer. I liked it. Who else? Any questions? Anyhow, yes, uh, Mr. Defcon. Oh, Defcon, nice. You going this year? Did you break the badge? Did you? Was you able to hack the badge? Four years ago. <laughs> Four years ago? Yeah, uh, tough. <laughs> yeah, pre-COVID. Uh, but uh, my question is, you had it on the slide, but I, I wanted to maybe expand on that. Why did you decide to use SAM instead of a more like a complete or like SAM? From what I know, is more software development and application security focused, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe like NIST uh, frameworks are more like a complete security picture. Mm-hmm. And why, for your circumstances, did you decide to use SAM instead of like these more complete security this frameworks? This is a great question. So I, in case anybody didn't hear it, you know, why, why SAM and not NIST, if you think of it this way? So one of the things we did, when I, we, when I started out looking at the organization, we took a list of the NIST, I think it's 834? Uh, no. Yeah. Framework. And said, okay, how can I map this into my organizations and how can we all follow that? It, 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 it didn't quite fit. It was almost a square peg in a round hole for us, but it's still important. So when we look at, when we looked at SAM originally, I said, how can I map the SAM questions to what NIST is? Because I will get the question. I got that from our internal teams. Hey, Jason, why don't we just use NIST? That's been around forever. Why are we using this new thing? And so I said, well, if, if we can map these, that'd be great. So we actually hired, uh, we hired an outside consultant firm and we purchased a commercial off-the-shelf product, COTS, commercial off-the-shelf product, that actually will, you can click on the button and say, here's Sam, map this to NIST for me. And so maybe everything in this doesn't apply to everybody, but certain teams will still go above and beyond. So yes, Sam is, is our benchmark standard. It's solid. That's how we can, we can look at things across the board. But when someone says, hey, we want to do a little bit better. Can we, can we do NIST as well? I go, well, yeah, you can. But by the way, when you're looking at NIST, you know, 30, you know, 50, 70, 80% of your stuff's already done with SAM. And we picked SAM because of its ease of implementation. 
easy to explain to teams than the multiple choice questions. But we didn't ignore NIST. We still use that completely, but we can map it. So now teams can just look back and forth. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you for saying you're sorry you're late. I appreciate that. 12 push-ups. No, I'm kidding. Go. I'm assuming Sam rather than something like vSIM again because of his ease. Yes. Yeah. So he, he asked, you know, other, other items and what are you working on? It really was the, it was the ease of implementation. It, the teams, it was, they picked the, ma'am, ma'am, we, we rolled this out and had every team up, running, looking at it and had a baseline score, a self-assessed score <sighs> within six months. Every, all, all the teams. And they all kind of got a feel for it. Now again, they were, they were suspect, but it was much easier for them to just go, you know, multiple choice. One of the other things uh, was important, when we started with the spreadsheets, teams could kind of cheat. And what I mean by that, not cheat intentionally, teach unintentionally. Um, they would say, so I would say something like, do you have a security architecture diagram? And they'd go, no, we, we don't do that. But then the next question would be, do you update your security architecture diagram once a year? And they'd go, yes. <laughs> okay, well, technically speaking, you don't have one, so I guess you are updating nothing and one time zero is zero. So I suppose that's right. But it, it allowed them, it, it gave us a false sense of where we were going. We looked at a COTS product, and that COTS product forced, like, it won't let you do that. It kind of, it, it kind of puts those things in place that's, that's really bad. I'm not that bad, dude. Really? Come on, man. Um, no, but it kind of, it forces those in place and helps give the score. So it, one of the other reasons was we, we saw a COTS product that we could use to help implement this. And that really made it easier. Um, so great. Who else got a question? Oh, hi. hi. What is your name? Amela. Hi, Amelia. How are you? Um, I was interested in uh, learning a little bit more about how do you apply this for AI products? Because I was reading actually, and it's technology and process agnostic. So have you had in your experience this applied for AI products, especially on the software lifecycle? Mm. I don't, she asked, wait, how do I apply this to AI products? So we, we built an internal, you guys have heard of chat GPT? Yeah, well, internally, we, what do we call it? Z, ZGPT or Zebra GPT, which is AI, right? It's an AI type program. That team that built it, we put them through the same processes. We still measured them across the board. So I, I don't know if I understand why, why you think AI programming would be process agnostic. Like it still applies. Like there's still a threat to, when I build the threat AI model, I still do a threat analysis. As I put it in, in, as I go all the way through implementation, I still have design. To me, it's just a piece of software. So I, I, I would say I'm not sure how to answer your question because I don't know if I agree from a risk perspective. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'd have to think about that one a bit more. Why don't you catch me after? We'll chit chat and talk more. Is there, by the way, if anybody on that side of the room has questions, we can throw the microphone. It's not not a problem. <laughs> I'm happy to throw it. Um, yeah. Sorry, we have. No more time. Ugh. I promise a little one, and then after we try to match his energy to give Michael him already up. asked a question. He, this it's, one, uh, this one's it's five hours. a quick one, Jason. I yeah. just wanted to know before you implemented yeah. or went down the path with um, Sam, did you have an existing SDLC or SDL in place, and did your results from Sam, if you did, guide changes to that? So he asked if we already had an existing SDLC process before we got started with all this. And what I will say is, across the 30 teams, 15 in the business units, 15 in IT. Uh, it was anarchy. Um, yeah, I mean, as IT kind of sort of had one. Uh, some teams tried to implement BSM and failed because uh, BSM it's great, but it does read like a dissertation at times. And again, if it's not easy to put in, teams there, there were too much going on. So yeah, they kind of had some, and we started the scores when we started putting Sam in place. We noticed the scores were mm, no okay ish, right? Not horrible. It wasn't like we were doing, not doing anything. Teams were doing something, but now we could measure it consistently, and now we can get better. Nice. So I hope that answers. And uh, I know we don't have time, but if you want to catch me afterwards, you can. If anybody else wants to catch me afterwards, you absolutely can. Um, I think we're out, of we're out of time, unfortunately. But catch me. Thank you very much. Drive through. Yay!